Pitwise webinar, Christmas Unwrapped. Today we'll be taking you through key, key learnings for Christmas and Click Frenzy and other important festive season shopping days. Before we get started, I would like to take you through a few items just so you know how to participate in today's webinar. You will have the opportunity to submit questions by typing in your questions into the pane on the left hand side of your screen. Um, feel free to submit any questions during any time of the presentation and we'll be sure to contact you with the correct answer. Just as an FYI, we will be recording today's session and a playback link will be sent to you and to all who have registered just so that you can revisit all the content we've discussed. So now to introduce our speaker, Alice Almeida, who is the Manager of Innovation and Insights here at Hitwise. Alice, over to you. Thank you, Helen, and thank you for everyone for joining me this afternoon. Um, I don't know whether it's you're taking advantage of the air conditioning because it's 5,000 degrees outside, or if you're genuinely interested in, in the retail stats from last year. Um, but thank you very much for joining. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year um, and getting ready to get stuck into 2017. Sorry. So some of the things that we're going to be just, just talking about today is uh, we're going to do a bit of a review of 2016 retail. We're going to be looking at the key retail sales days, in particular within the last two months of the year, the hot sales event performance, Christmas period performance, some of the top retailers and the performance that they had over the period, uh, the hot products that consumers are searching for and uh, looking to buy, um, some Christmas gift themes and profiles, and then we're going to look at cross-channel trends. And one last thing that we're going to look at is alternative payment options, um, which is something that has kind of burst into this market, um, and we'll go into that in a bit more detail. But first of all, let's have a look at the year of retail. Um, so we're going to have a look about whether or not online retail has impacted in-store traffic, um, a category performance looking at 2015 versus 2016, then we're going to look within the category at the sub-industries and the strongest day of the week in online retail. So first up, um, something that I found really, really interesting is the day of waiting out the front of Meyer or David Jones for the Boxing Day sales are coming to an end. We're starting to see a big decline in in-store traffic and we're starting to see an increase in online retail um, behaviours and purchases. So just quickly, I um, was lucky enough to get my hands on some ShopperTrack data which tracks in-store traffic. And from this chart, you can actually see in December, there was the largest amount of um, in-store traffic that was I mean, in-store traffic in December dropped significantly in comparison to 2015. So a lot of people are now starting to come online and do a lot of their shopping, um, especially around Christmas. Now, it's, what's really important to also know is to have a look at shopping and classifieds and how it's being accessed. And, and from this, you can see that 42% of all traffic to the shopping and classifieds category is actually coming from search. So it's vital that you have your search strategy in place in order to be able to take these consumers. So of that, 34% is paid and 66% is organic. So the fact that there's 66% of all access to shopping and classifieds is organic, uh, it means that there's ample opportunity to discover what are the search terms that are driving the consumers and tackle them that way. So obviously after they've been searched, they go into the shopping and classifieds um, category websites. And of that, 35% then go on to com the computers and internet category, 30% uh, stay within shopping and classifieds, and then 18% go back to search. So there's almost 20% of people that aren't finding what they want through going through search and shopping and classifieds, so they're going back to search again. So it's really important to understand these different audiences and how they behave. Now having a look at um, shopping and classifieds in 2015 versus 16, um, I have to admit a lot of this presentation is charts. I know that that's um, probably, probably not something that you want to hear, but I think it's the best way to represent the true performance of the actual category itself. So having a look at this, this is a, a, a review of January through to December. 2015 is obviously the blue and 16 is the yellow. You can see, once I make it a little bit clearer, that the first seven months of the year, we actually saw 2015 performing stronger. Um, we need to discover why that's the case, but from August through to December, that's where we saw 2016 really kind of um, bring in more, more audience and more total visits. 
So this is where we see a lot of the sales that have been implemented, um, which I'll go into a bit further down. But we're seeing a much str uh, stronger audience in the you know last quarter of the year. So now we look at total visits to sub industries. So obviously every you know there's different categories that we look at, and there's quite a few on this slide. Um, so I'll make it a little bit easier by just highlighting who has increased in a positive and negative. So everyone has had a positive increase except for classifieds and computers. Now it's really important to note that this is just December data, it's not year on year data, and classifieds generally um, drops back a little bit in December anyway, um, and computers. Computers is a unique case. Um, when you look at November data for computers, you actually see that that's one of its strongest months. The reason for that is all of the hot sales events days, which I will go into, um, computers really kind of kills it there. So a lot of their business is done in the November sales. Uh, I think Australians wait for the heavy, heavy discounts to, to get new laptops, computers, or any kind of um, computer um, appliances. So it is important to note that there were some big changes um, in the last 12 months and grocery and alcohol, health and beauty, music, books and baby products and intimate apparel all saw an increase. Now these are you know, typically Christmas gift styled categories so it's not a huge surprise um, but the grocery and alcohol category is one that we need to watch quite closely because that is changing very, very quickly. That's the likes of Vino Mofo um, growing at such a rapid rate. Other, there's other boutique wine places that are coming on board now. Um, and also a lot of people are turning to having their groceries delivered. So Harris Farm in particular has seen quite a strong growth as well. So when you look at the category like, um, and you break it down a bit more, it provides much stronger insights into why this growth has occurred. Now, uh, now we look at daily data, um, and this is across November and December, starting into a little bit of in January. As you can see, there's quite a theme here. Um, there's quite a trend here within the data. Um, and one thing to point out is that Monday is and seems to have always been a key day for online retail. Um, so the only time that it didn't really trump was on the 4th, sorry, I don't mean to say trump, I'm trying to avoid that word. Um, but the only time that it actually beat, was beaten was in the week commencing of the 14th of November. And that is because the peak that you see there is actually click frenzy. So um, I will go into that in a bit more detail. But it's really important to know when is the activity happening. Why is it happening on a Monday? I think it's because everyone starts the working week after a great weekend and they don't really want to kind of get stuck into it. And they take a bit of time to, you know, um, have, a, have a look to see what sales are around. So now we look at the hot sales days. So what were the key shopping dates over the festive period? Um, so here we're going to have a look at Click Frenzy, uh, which is on the 15th of November, Black Friday, followed by Cyber Monday, and then obviously the lead up to Christmas and then Boxing Day sales. So they're the key shopping events uh, over the last two months of last year. So now we're going to have a look at the retail performance of last year. So in particular, looking at the hot sales events, such as Click Frenzy, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday, uh, we're going to have a look at the year-on-year -year performance, and then you know what websites really, really won that period there as well. So if we look at um, Shopping and Classifieds Daily by event, this is uh, Click Frenzy data. So if we have a look here, um, sorry, this is total visits data. This is for Click Frenzy. If we have a look here, Click Frenzy has grown significantly in the past 12 months. You know, there was, it's, it's had a lot of bad press up until last year because it was one of the things that first broke the internet in Australia. Um, I, I know that I'm probably not the only one that tried to sign on to Click Frenzy and not being able to. Um, but this year, they actually, or last year, sorry, they actually saw, um, didn't see too many hiccups, which was great. Um, and that's why you saw an increase. Interestingly enough, uh, that streak lasted for 24 hours, even into the following night. Um, so Click Frenzy is no longer just the nighttime sale. And a lot of brands are jumping onto the Click Frenzy um, sales event because they're knowing how much it's driving traffic and how much interest there is in the Australian market. So the next is Black Friday. And whilst we see an increase of, on 2015, um, it's just below Click Frenzy, and this is where we see a lot of people are picking up their technology items. So when I mentioned before about computers, this is where we see a lot of interest in computers kick in. 
Same with Cyber Monday. Now, Cyber Monday is surprisingly um, performs better than Click Frenzy and Black Friday. But when you actually talk to people about it, not too many people know about Cyber Monday. So there seems to be lower awareness of it, but it's, all, it's performing a lot better. Um, it performed better than 2015, like everything else. But the one that really kind of stood out was the Boxing Day sales. So um, as you can see, Boxing Day on the 26th of December, huge spike. This is where you tie back into the drop in in-store traffic. So less people are going into actual stores, more people are going online. We've seen the, the stats from both sides and the, the message is just moulding together perfectly. So more and more people are choosing to sit on their couch and, and purchase products online than actually wait up um, from 3 a.m. in the line outside hoping to, to nag a, a sale. The only other sale that I'd like to mention is eBay's Green Monday. That's only relatively new, but as you can see, it's performing quite well. So that's an event to watch for sure. So now we look at Click Frenzy 2015 versus 16. Um, you've obviously got the in the orange, which is the daily average. So that's the daily average of that week. And I wanted to do an analysis to see how much Click Frenzy actually contributes to the actual industry itself and what categories perform the best. So the sub-industries who saw the strongest growth year on year within Click Frenzy were ticketing, video games, sport and fitness, baby products, toys and hobbies. Now baby products is a category that's um, seen the strongest growth um, that I have noticed in the last 12 months across everything. So parents are actively trying to save money, so they're turning to the sales to, to, um, to get themselves a bargain and to save a, quite a lot of money because obviously having a child is quite expensive. So that's an important category to keep in mind. Um, you know, parents are, are very active when they're shopping for their little ones. Then we look at sub-industries which benefit from Kick Click Frenzy. So this is the ones where we saw the biggest increase and of course number one was apparel and accessories. That is obviously the most dominant category within Click Frenzy itself. Ticketing is another one. Baby products again, rewards and directories and sports and fitness. So all of these sub-industries were impacted positively by Click Frenzy. So now we have a look at website ranking for the whole of December. This is where we're going to look into some of the Christmas data. So apparel and accessories, there's no huge surprise here. It seems to be um, the, the same six or seven brands that are in the top five. Um, so there was no change from this, this time last year as well. Then we go into appliance and electronics. Um, again, not too much has changed. It's still the big dominant guys that are in market. Um, JB Hi-Fi is, is absolutely killing it in this category. Toys and hobbies. So Toys and Hobbies is interesting because Etsy has grown substantially over the past 12 months. Um, people are turning to you know, places like Etsy to find homemade products for their children, like whether it's a timber truck or, or a doll. Um, so they're turning to Etsy for that. The other new additions for this year was Mighty Ape and Hobby King. Um, so they're also sites to watch quite closely. Then we look at grocery and alcohol. Uh, Woolworths and Coles, number one and two, there's no surprise there. Um, Dan Murphy's and Aldi were also in the same in, in this for last year. But the one thing that really the one that stood out was First Choice Liquor. This was the first year that it's actually appeared. Um, so that's another one to watch. But then when we go into health and beauty, this is where it gets interesting. There's quite a few um, new brands that have popped up in this in this area. So Chemist Warehouse and Priceline Pharmacy, once again it's it, it's you know fairly normal to see those brands there. Mecca has uh, increased quite substantially in the past 12 months. Shaver Shop and there's a new one called iHerb which I have to admit I had to Google because I hadn't heard about. Um, but when you see the increase in green living in Australia you can understand why this is now number five in um, website ranking for health and beauty. So now we go into the hot products of 2016. So what were the hot products across the Christmas period and then by each hot sale date? Um, I know that you'll probably see some of these and not be surprised in, in whatsoever, um, but the Fitbit was probably the number one gift um, and that, that was huge. Pandora, um, Swarovski crystals, they also saw a really strong um, increase in December. A couple of new ones. 
Kylie Cosmetics, for those people that don't know, is Kylie Jenner's makeup brand. Um, that has gone through the roof in the last 12 months. Um, and if you're in the cosmetics industry, that's definitely one to keep a close eye on. Sunny Life, um, for anyone that's on Instagram, you would have not had a summer and not seen a picture of somebody sitting on a big flamingo. This brand has just nailed this category and it's just gone huge in, in summer. Um, and so that's another one to watch. And Lego, Lego seems to make it every single year. Different product within Lego, but it's, it's one of those brands that's been around for many, many years. Even my childhood, it was one of the hottest gifts. And that's, it's a brand that we don't see going anywhere. Hatchimals. Now, uh, again, I have to admit, I had to Google what a Hatchimal was. They were huge in the US. They sold out in Australia. So I actually, in my Google um, adventure and trying to work out what a Hatchimal was, I found that there were parents that were begging for a Hatchimal. They were offering the most ridiculous amount of money for one of these toys because they are the new hot thing. Uh, basically, it's an egg that hatches, turns into a chick, and then the chick grows up into teenage years. And uh, that's basically all I got from it. But that's a brand to really watch as well. Um, I know that there's a wait list on a few shops for that. So um, yeah, for anyone that has children, watch that closely. Um, the other areas that we saw a big increase on was Lush Cosmetics. And so they're handmade cosmetics. Um, they have just, in December, just completely nailed it as well. Drones. Drones are um, scarily becoming very, very popular. Um, and that's something that, you know, for anyone, again, who's on social media, we'll see that everyone loves to take footage of, uh, especially around beaches. And the other one that um, annoyingly made the list was the Elf on the Shelf. Um, I never got the concept of this, but you know a lot of people did, and that's one of the hottest products for December last year. So the other area that we need to consider in December is gift vouchers. Um, I know my father and brothers love this category. Um, and as you can see from this, the, the interest in gift vouchers peaked significantly in the last week before Christmas. And this is the people that leave their Christmas buying to the very last minute who, um, and I'll show you, a lot of people struggle with what to buy for Christmas presents. And this is just an idea of where they've, they've tried to, to buy something that's you know, suitable for the person and then given up and just got a gift voucher. Um, whenever I do insights, I like to relate it to people I know. And this is definitely my brothers. They, they try to buy a gift and then it's all too hard and they end up going to Bunnings or somewhere and buying me a gift voucher, which I love. But as you can see from this, the um, week leading up to Christmas is when it peaks. So in regards to gift vouchers, what kind of gift vouchers are consumers looking for in the first two weeks of December? The, um, the template comes up number one on um, the two weeks before and the two weeks last two weeks of before Christmas. So this is I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how people are using these templates, but I remember when I was a child, I, I used these templates on I'll do the dishes. Um, it was kind of my Christmas gift because you know, didn't have any money as a child. And then I don't something that people are starting to use and, and to Google for. The other thing, really important thing, is these vouchers are higher in money. They are more organised because there's, as you can see, there's some travel um, brands here. So there's holidays, there's restaurants, there's Jetstar, um, the, the travel itself. So people are looking at really generous um, gift vouchers within the first two weeks of December. And then what are they looking for in the last two weeks? Uh, once again, templates number one. Hotel's still there, but what we're seeing is a lot of um, people are looking for brand particular um, gift vouchers in this period, such as ASOS, The Iconic, Harris Farm, Amazon, Bunnings. So these are the last minute vouchers. And all of these places are um, where you can actually down buy the gift vouchers online and download them. Um, I, that's another point that I'll make further on down is there's a couple of brands that have gift vouchers, but they don't actually allow you to print off a copy. So you order one and it's mailed out. In this day and age, that's not really sticking with consumers. So the likes of Harris Farm and Bunnings, where you can actually do that online, um, it, it's really kind of cutting through. Now, if we look at Click Frenzy, um, I've just thrown a word all together of all of the different products and the hot products uh, within Click Frenzy. As you can see, PlayStation, Fitbit, TVs, iPads, um, you know, then you go into brands such as Sony and Samsung.
um, these are all the things that people were searching for. Um, so it was very technology related, but also there was quite a lot of um, fashion and accessories as well. There were 248 different search term variations on the Click Frenzy Day. So the five most wanted were PlayStation, TV, iPad, Fitbit, and Review the Fashion, um, which is, you know, for a brand to be pulled out, their top five is, is huge. Then when we look at Black Friday, there were over 1,500 different search term variations, and the five most wanted were Apple products, PlayStation again, a laptop computer, clothing and makeup. So a bit more broader, but it really kind of, as, as I mentioned early on in the presentation, uh, the computer category took a dive in, November, in December. This is why, because a lot of the purchasing happened in November. So then we go into Cyber Monday. Um, there were 228 different search term variations. Um, as you can see, Amazon absolutely nails this one. Then there's laptop, Xbox, Uniqlo, and computer again. So this is just a really good way to showcase the, the top brands, the top themes that people were searching for during these actual events. So now we go into the Christmas shopper, um, and I wanted to have a look to see what kind of um, search terms people were putting in for Christmas gifts. So when it comes to buying Christmas gifts, over 100,000 Australians consulted in search for ideas. So there was a lot of people out there that actually needed guidance and help in deciding what to buy for, for their partners or their parents. So as you can see, it peaks on the 11th of December. Um, holds quite high until the 18th and then it drops off on, off on the 25th. So I wanted to get that theme, all the Christmas gift themes and split it out to see what are the categories within that. So most of the searches that went in were Christmas gift idea, that was 37%. The next one after that was for her. And interestingly enough, when, you, when I ran the data to, to profile that for her segment, it was a lot of men that were struggling to decide what to get for their wives, their mother-in-laws, their sisters. So they were really needing suggestions and, and assistance in, in what to get for their partners. Um, but the ones that have seen a strong year-on-year -year increase was DIY and cooking. So there's a lot of um, and budgets obviously included in this as well. There's a lot of people who are um, cutting down on the amount of money that they're spending um, at Christmas time and they're looking for alternative ways to give gifts uh, without having to fork out a fortune. Obviously there's still a large chunk of people still willing to spend a lot of money but there is that segment that's growing um, quite quickly um, that's looking at, it, at cheaper Christmas presents. So going back to this chart, I wanted to see at what time over the two months before Christmas do these different um, search themes kick in. So the DIY gift kicks in on the 20th of November. Obviously that's because they need to have enough time to make the actual gift before Christmas, so that makes sense. The cooking gift kicks in on the 27th of November. Again, for anyone that has a cooking ability like I do, which is none, I need all the time in the world to be able to come up with ideas and practice and practice and practice in order to be able to get the, the you know, baking gifts out. Gifts for him peak on the 11th of December. So this is a lot of uh, females out there that are getting quite organised and wanting to know what to get their partners, brothers, fathers. And then gifts for her is on the last week of December. So this is where people are struggling for ideas for females and as I mentioned before, like my brothers who will probably turn to a gift voucher to in the very last days before Christmas. And that's my point. Gift cards peak on just before the 25th of December. So now we look at shopper profiles by the time of year. I wanted to kind of break out three different categories. Uh, so we've got organised and what I'm, what I'm calling normal uh, and then last minute shoppers. So you've got those organised people that are buying Christmas gifts in sales throughout the year but in this case I've just taken October, November when the hot sales days are. So the organised people are, are more likely to be 25 to 34, female, and the mosaic groups that they're from are International Infusion and Books and Boots. So they are budget shoppers, they're looking to save money and they're buying their Christmas gifts when the sales are on so they don't have to pay full price closer to Christmas. Then when you look at the normal guys, which I'm saying is between the 4th and the 17th, they're also more likely to be 25 to 34. Uh, slightly female, but they're new homes and hopes and independence and career. So they, you know, there's, there's no need, they're already relatively affluent, so there's no need for them to, to, you know, plan their Christmas shopping around sales. 
And then there's the last minute guys um, who are more likely to be 18 to 24. 44% um, of them are male. They're from books and boots and exclusive environs. So the um, exclusive environs is a really interesting uh, one because they're actually living in very prestigious and affluent addresses in the country. So they um, are in complete contrast to books and boots. But I think these are the really time poor people who um, obviously have a very busy work life and are leaving Christmas presents until the very last minute um, when they can focus solely on that. So I wanted to have a look at the profile of the hot, some of the hot products. So when we look at a Fitbit, it's pretty equally split between females and males. Um, the mosaic group that it skews towards the strongest is knowledgeable success. So they are well educated family and couple households. And you can find them in food and beverage, sport and fitness and social networking categories. Then we look at the Sunny Life brand. Um, this one was of interest to me because I think I spent way too much money on this brand over Christmas. The 73% are female. They're from Books and Boots, so young professionals and students living in lower cost inner city apartments. And you can find them in lifestyle, traveling, shopping and classifieds. And then Swarovski um, I decided to profile because, as I said before, this brand is always uh, on the top of the list at Christmas time. So they are 67% female, they're international infusion, which is a multicultural extended family, and you can find them in lifestyle, social networking, and shopping and classifieds. So now we go to cross-channel trends, um, and one of the points I mentioned earlier on is alternative payment options and how that is that's growing quite quickly. We look at mobile and retail, and then I'll end with a summary. So, there was 220,000 Australians who were seeking out an alternative payment option in December 2016. So that includes things like lay-by, um, personal loan, credit card and afterpay. So this is a really important um, area to, to look at because a lot of people um, who aren't wanting to um, you know, bake rumbles or cookies and, or make things are looking at ways that they can buy the gifts that they want um, in an affordable way. So having a look at Afterpay, um, for those that don't know Afterpay, it's a way that you can pay off what you buy in installments. It's like an online lay-by, but you actually get the product before you pay it off. So um, the growth in this company has been absolutely substantial in the past 12 months. I think any brand would love to have this kind of growth on their books. Um, you know, it started the year at around 59,000 visits to um, the website and it ended in just over a million, which is a growth of 1,600%. So that is absolutely huge. Now this is just website visits. When you actually look at search, there were 60,000 Australians searching for Afterpay just in December 2016. So there's a lot of people that were coming across that weren't quite sure. A lot of the search terms within this was what is Afterpay? Um, so a lot of people were intrigued and wanted to know more about it. So the top industries that were working with Afterpay and that came up quite strong was fashion and accessories, toys and hobbies, home and garden and technology. So um, a lot of these products that you can use Afterpay for fall within these categories. Um, and for anyone that hasn't looked at it, I suggest you do um, because it's, it's only going to keep growing. So who are the Afterpay profilers? Um, if you have a look at the age here, majority of them are 25 to 34. Um, 68% of them are female. They're from knowledgeable success in new homes and homes. So when I talk to people about Afterpay, there's a perception that it's uni students or people that are on the lower socioeconomic groups who can't afford to buy products. And that's actually not the case. It's people that might have uh, a large family and they, they make quite a lot of money, but they don't want to blow you know, $5,000 in December for Christmas presents when they can split that out over a couple of months. So the, the people that you think are using Afterpay um, are not necessarily the ones that are. So it's, it's those well-educated and slightly affluent families that are looking at it. So now we look at mobile. So we've got shopping and classifieds and um, the device split between mobile and desktop. 2016 was the first year where mobile is equal to desktop. This means that all visits to the shopping and classifieds um, category, 50% was done on the mobile. So all these years where um, we've talked about it being the year of the mobile, for shopping and classifieds, this is now it. This is now
We have a look at all the industries to see where mobile is. As you can see, it's growing significantly, still not at 50%, but it's growing at a really, really strong rate. What's holding it back? Uh, there's areas within finance. Um, that's kind of not heavily being used on a mobile phone. Um, but overall, the, the strength of mobile within shopping and classifieds um, is absolutely huge. So if we have a look at mobile and the breakout between 2015 and 16 across all the different categories, I'm sorry if this is really hard to see, but as you can see, there's no orange here, everything is green, everything is either grown. The two grey boxes means that there's been no, no shift in the past 12 months. So there's every single category is seeing a positive, a positive move. The one to call out is intimate apparel. Uh, that has grown significantly in the past 12 months. Um, that could be one of the Christmas gift um, ideas as well. So I know that was a lot to take in um, and I know that there's a lot of in insights and data there that you might want to have a look at, but I'll just quickly summarise. So first and foremost, understand how your consumers are using search. So with 66% of all search traffic being organic, there's a huge opportunity to discover the terms currently not being used by your competitors. So this is one of my strongest um, points that I make in market is, you, you know, a, the, an article just recently come out about using the right language, whether it's English or American. Um, you really need to get to, to know how your consumers are searching for your product or a product that you're for your, from your competitors to really be able to utilize um, search to the best of its ability. So gain insight into hot sales events and how they will impact your revenue in months to come. So as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation with computers, whilst it um, took a slight decline in December, it, its performance in November was huge. So understand if you're in that category that that's what your competitors are doing or you know, maybe put out a sale in early December to bring up the traffic in December, but there's ways that you, you can build strategy around the insights from this. So Monday is not just the start of the working week, it is when a lot of Australians are shopping or they're doing a lot of research for shopping. So that is the most ripe time to target them. Um, so make sure you implement uh, that important retail day in your strategy as well. So each year new brands pop into the top five for their category. You need to understand who these brands are how they got there, um, and you need to keep on top of where your brand is sitting in comparison to them. Make it simple for last minute shoppers. As I mentioned earlier on with the gift vouchers, there's a few brands out there that don't give you an immediate voucher uh, when you purchase it online. So make them printable online, make them immediate, um, because people are leaving it to the very, very last minute. Use search to assist with content planning around the Christmas period. So as you saw from the presentation, there's a lot of others out there that are struggling with ideas on, on what to get for certain people. Um, use that information and build content out to pull them into your website. If you haven't already, implement an alternative payment option such as Afterpay. Uh, it's important to note that they haven't sponsored or paid for any of this presentation. It's just a brand that needs to be highlighted because it has grown so strongly. Um, consumers are demanding this, this kind of alternative payment option, so um, definitely consider it. And finally, mobile is a must. It's no longer a nice to have. Consumers not only mobile, but they're purchasing off their mobile phones a lot more, so it must be included in your marketing strategy. So that is a basic snapshot of retail for the past 12 months. Um, there is so much more more data that we can look at for this. There are so many more cross tabs that we can run. Uh, we can dig a lot deeper. But obviously, I had 30 minutes um, and not three hours. So if you have any questions at all or if you would like any further information, please reach out to me on my email below uh, on, the, on the screen now. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, and yeah, and if you have any questions at all, yell out. But thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful afternoon.